It's beginning to look like Ada Boxmus Everywhere you go Let your ideas flow For projects you want to show With push buttons and LEDs aglow It's beginning to look like Ada Boxmus Everything is grand But the nicest thing on the shelf Is something you made yourself With your own hand A circuit playground with a speaker for sound Is the wish of Barney and Ben A Raspberry Pi with some LCD eyes Is the hope of Janice and Jen And friends at the Hackerspace Can't wait to 3D print again It's beginning to look like Ada Boxmus Everywhere you go So grab a feather wing Let the piezo ring Prototype aboard for sensing snow It's beginning to look like Ada Boxmus Time for a Silastros Get your projects all debunked Then cozy up nice and snug With some warm Hey, we're here. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. My name is Noetta Wes, and I'm a designer here at Adafruit. Joining me every week is... You're Pedro. That's what you told me, anyway. Are you kidding me, Siri? You're messed up, my show. Yes. <laughs> what's up? What's, what's up, everybody? I'm Pedro Wes, creative tech here at Adafruit, and every week we come to share 3D print projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This is Siri combined 3D printing, DIY electronics, not Siri, to make inspirational projects for you <laughs> folks. How's everybody doing today? What? Continue. Okay. Continue. Uh, let's jump right into the show. We have a coupon code for you folks. This week it is a Turtle Tree. So if you want to pick up anything in the Adafruit shop, please do and use coupon code Turtle Tree. We have some really nice freebie deals going on um, throughout the season here. We have some freebies. So if we head over to the website, go to adafruit.com slash free, we can see all the different things that are available for freebies. So uh, for the first thing, uh, for orders that are $99 or more, we get a free Perma Proto half-size breadboard. For orders that are 200 more, you get the breadboard plus uh, free ground shipping from UPS. That's continental US only. And then for orders that are $299 or more, you get the Perma Proto, the free shipping, and a Circuit Playground Express. Head on over to adabox.com so you can see our lovely um, countdown to how many days left until Ada Boxmas. We got 11 days, 12 hours, and 57 minutes. So get on that. If you're not subscribed, please do so. This is Ada Box number 14. So uh, it's kicking out. Also, check out the video. We got a really nice sing along. You might have heard the song in the beginning of the stream. Um, that's, uh, yeah, team, team at uh, New York put that together. And it's a really nice song. So check it out on YouTube so you can share it and stuff. Um, but again, be sure to get on that Ada box so you are not disappointed come the holiday day. Damn. And running back over to the coupon code. Don't forget, coupon code is Turtle Tree. We're hanging out in the Discord chat room. If anybody wants to say hi, we are there. If anyone wants any shout outs and stuff, um, yeah, we can also take questions later in the show. Cool, cool. Shout out to everybody hanging out in the chat rooms. We are hanging out in the YouTube chat, the Discord, the Twitch, really? Facebook. Didn't go live, so sorry about that. No, it's, that, it's definitely there. I, I'm looking at it. Oh. Yeah, it's just uh, Facebook-ish. I tagged you in it as well. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I didn't get my tags. All right. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this week's super awesome project. Sure, let's just jump right into... Uh, the overhead so we can look at it. So 
You might have seen this before. It's a 3D printed turtle. Here it is. It's a little snap fit enclosure for the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit and the TFT Gizmo. We got this really nice lens here. And uh, it's really easy to take it apart so I can pop it out like that. There's a little turtle friend there. And uh, here's the little shell there that houses this nice lens so it magnifies the display. That's really nice. You may have known that, uh, seen this lens in our monster mask projects. And uh, that's a really good one. Uh, here's the TFT Gizmo with the uh, Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. And it has a battery in between uh, the uh, standoffs here. The way this is assembled is with some hardware screws, which are included with the TFT Gizmo. And uh, the standoffs are already pre-soldered on, so really there's, yeah, really there's no uh, soldering required on your behalf. Um, so the battery is, is, is installed by uh, sandwiching in between here. You got a little bit of wiggle room in there. That's the 350 milliamp battery. Uh, to turn it on, just plug it in like that. There's no on-off switch um, that's built into the circuit playground, so we could just disconnect the battery. And of course, my battery has died. Yeah, it's totally dead. Oh, that's so oh, hilarious. Oh my god, a spare you right here. another battery and about... Uh, this was definitely planned because we no, could promote the USB-C LiPo charger. Oh, I actually ripped the battery. Um, you guess? Well, I'd have to unscrew it and uh, spend time there. <laughs> I have oh, to just plug it. it in, just have it hanging out. Um, but I won't be able to fit it in the turtle. Oh, you already showed it inside the turtle. Mm, yeah, but not with the graphic on. All right, so this is running the Turtle Graphics Library for Circuit Python. This was put together by JP, who, uh, who wrote this lovely demo sketch that makes a tree. And let's see if I can get this to focus. You can see those lovely pixels. This is a 240 by 240 display. Uh, it's an IPS display, so it's got some pretty nice viewing angles when you don't have a lot of light and glare. Let's see if I can do the autofocus stuff. Isn't working for me. There we go. Very, very crisp. Really nice uh, color contrast there. When you have a nice battery. That's so funny that I ripped the battery before the show. <laughs> All right. Um, so cool. Let me kind of walk through some of the things that, uh, that you might want to do. So if you do print out the turtle shell, I really recommend um, having the, this lens here as it really helps um, magnify the graphics. You can see that's what it looks like. Uh, the view angle is a little bit iffy on the sides because it's a, it's a convex lens, so you can you kind of get that much there. And uh, I added some hot little dabs of hot glue here to keep it in place. Uh, I couldn't figure out a good way to snap fit this guy, so a little bit of hot glue goes a long way. There we go. This is printed without any support material, and there's a little opening there um, for the USB port. So the way this works is there are these little nubs here on the inside of the turtle shell. And on the outside here, you got these little snaps, these little V-shaped chevron shapes. And you have these little built-in standoffs um, that kind of house the guy like this. So it just fits in like that. You could also rotate it this way so that you have access to the USB port. Um, but I have it this way so that I can see the, the tree upright. Oh yeah, one last thing is take a look at his eyes. You see the eyes there? This is one of those techniques where you can uh, use a piece of filament to create eyes. So I just popped down his eyes, this little pokey thing. That's just a piece of 175 millimeter filament. You can see here he's got a nice hole there so that fits in perfectly and it gives him some different colored eyes. So that, that's how that works. I think I've seen it on other ornaments and things so that's what I thought I'd do. Also uh, another update to the bottom of the body. Uh, these little magnets here, they're really nice. They're uh, neodymium magnets, and they have these. I put these little slits in there, so that I could actually pop out the uh, pop out the magnets if I need to. So you can come in here and pop them out like that. I think that's a really nice uh, technique there, because I don't like to glue them. I did glue it on another one, and then I had to pry it out and break it apart. So uh, it can hold some things for you, like this palette knife. It's pretty neat. Um, so the way this goes in is it fits in like that. And then you can fit this over. Make sure you get that first nub in there and then you can turn around and click it into place. And there we go. Hey, it's still working, see? It's got a, a battery tail now. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, so you got access to the USB port if you turn it around and you have access to the battery. 
you also have access to all the stuff in the bottom here. So you want to do some, if you want to light up the LEDs as well, the NeoPixels, you could do that here. You could use any of the sensors, maybe you want to shake it to do something, that'd be really cool. Um, I haven't had much time to write some sketches for it, but there are some really great examples out there that we'll take a look at in the learned guide. So there's a little turtle guy. Um, all that he's missing to make this more festive is a little hat, a little Santa hat. So I, I quickly made this last night. It's a little Santa hat, I printed it in um, PETG, the new Prusa filament. And this just clicks in like that. You know, your turtle has a little Santa hat to go with the Christmas tree. There you go. I should give him a razor blade <laughs> so he could fight the duck. <laughs> the, the goose. There you go. So that is the project. Let's take a quick look at the learn guide and we'll walk through some of the stuff. Head on over to learn.adafruit.com. You'll see this guy has just got published. Check out the YouTube video. It walks through things that I just talked about. And you can put it on your fridge or whatever if you'd like. Um, the TFD and the blue fruit is what we recommend as uh, the Blue Fruit has way more RAM and it's speedier than the Circuit Playground Express. So that's why we're using the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit in this project, because um, it, it's just faster. So that's really all the parts you need, those four guys. We're out of stock at the moment, but definitely sign up for the email notifications to find out when we are back in stock. You can fit the, the 350 milliamp battery, as it has, I think the 400 might fit, don't quote me on that, um, but uh, this is the one that we're using here. And you want to Ah oh, man, you definitely want to add some hot glue, so you <laughs> add some strain relief, because yeah, I pulled on it too hard, didn't I? We got the plastic lens, it's also, um, we'll be back in stock when we get more of them, and the fully, US, fully reversible USB cable. The neodymium magnets are right over here. You can uh, pick up some of those. They are from the K&J Magnetics Inc. It's a great uh, supplier of tons and tons of different sizes of neodymium magnets. We like their stuff, high quality stuff, and pretty decent pricing too. So check them out if you want to get some magnets that are small and embeddable. Okay, let's jump into some of the, um, some of the software stuff. Uh, so these are actually mirrored pages for JP's Learn Guide, uh, where he covers uh, how to install um, the Turtle library, how to install CircuitPython, uh, for your Circuit to Playground Bluefruit. So this just walks you through that. It has all the nice links and things that you want to know about um, for getting the latest version of Circuit Python. Today, we dropped a new version of Circuit Python. It is now beta zero. We were in alpha five and six, and now we are in beta. So we're on Circuit Python version five, beta zero. So definitely check it out. Let us know what you think. All right, and these screenshots just kind of share um, you know, how you want to drag and drop the files. So very, very um, thorough. And then the second page talks about how to get the actual examples, how to install the libraries. You've got a handful of libraries here using the, the bus device library, Adafruit Logging, the ST7789, uh, which is the display driver, and then of course, the Turtle library. Quick note about the Moo Python editor. It's a great little uh, lightweight uh, IDE for programming um, Python, and it has built-in serial REPL, so you can debug your code if you like. And uh, here are the examples that are hosted on GitHub, so if folks want to contribute, you can do a pull request, or if you find any issues, definitely submit a, a PR as well, an issue, rather. And uh, yeah, all the boilerplate stuff is here, so you can uh, reuse this top header code and then just kind of write your own uh, sketches. But uh, this walks you through kind of the commands that you can use for creating uh, your rudimentary shapes like a square. Um, and this one walks you making a asterisk and kind of creating this sort of cool star. And then this one walks you through uh, what it looks like. Here's a circle, using circle commands uh, to create some circles, circle paddles. This is a really nice one too. Um, so what's cool is you can just download all of these and host them all on the USB drive, the CircuitPy drive, and then just kind of swap between um, the file names and just name it code.py and then um, you can have your sketches. Um, you, can test out, you can test out all the different sketches that way um, by just having them on the, the CircuitPy drive and switching out the, the, the name of the files. And there's a lot of great examples. This is probably my favorite one, the rainbow uh, benzene. 
Classic, beautiful design. So check that one out. It's got that. Works really well with this turtle as well, since it's a uh, hexagon. And uh, there you go. Looks really good. You can also do some parable, parabolas. Yeah, it looks like 3D maps. Looks pretty cool. A lot of great examples. Some more interesting. You can do triangles as well. Man, it just keeps going. It keeps getting better. The helper cube. You can do that one as well. Uh, some Koch snowflakes, of course. And then here's the lovely Christmas tree. Oh, actually, this program was written by Keith. Sorry, shout out to Keith for uh, creating this lovely Christmas tree. Yeah, very nice. And here's the snowflake. Yeah, this is a really good one too. Snowflake. Yeah, and you can see here, um, without the lens, you kind of see a little bit of the edges of the display and the PCB. So that's why I recommend using the little lens. Mm -hmm. So very cool. And there's some more examples as well that uh, JP linked here. So shout out to JP for putting this together. Yeah, Yanni's saying they really likes adding the lens since you don't see the edges of the screen. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what's up. Cool. Heading over to the 3D printing part, these, uh, just those two pieces. If you want the hat, I should probably throw that up there, huh? I didn't, I, I made it last night, so I didn't get a chance to pu publish it. But we've got the Santa hat as a third add-on. Um, no support material, easy to print. Um, yeah, no support material for those. A little assembly here, the CAD files, the original CAD files, the source CAD files are available to download. We also have separate um, CAD files for the actual PCB, so the PCB for the TFT Gizmo and 3D model for the Circuit Player Blue Fruit is up on our GitHub repo. Uh, check that out. You can give it a star. You can submit uh, issues if you want to. If you want to request some new parts, so we can get those going. But uh, for the most part, we try to um, add our 3D models to the worm guides for those specific products. Yeah, and there's some PLA settings that we use. The last bit for 3D printing is installing those magnets. Um, the diameter for the magnets are uh, in inches, my apologies, but you can easily convert those into uh, metric. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, how thick it is, how the diameter of those discs. And I have those linked in the overview from K and J Magnetics. So check that out. That's really it for the 3D printing. Yeah, really good use of the snap fits. Um, I, I would say no screws, but you know, the, the TFT gizmo has screws because just the way it's bolted together, right? Cool. All right, and then for the assembly, we'll just walk through it. I kind of showed it to you, but um, there's some things to note when you <laughs> install the battery, definitely give that little battery some hot glue. That's a strain relief because I pulled it out too hard. <laughs> Um, you do want to put the battery, though, um, on the bottom of the, of the TFT gizmo because um, the standoffs are in the way that you can't kind of pull it out. So that's the one thing you want to look out for. Make sure that the orientation is, is, is right so that the battery cable is more accessible to the actual JST connector on the Blue Fruit. So just follow that photo. Um, the way it's installed, uh, the USB port from the Circuit Playground Express or the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit, they're always lined up with the 12 here. It's supposed to be like a clock on the, on the back of the TFT Gizmo. Um, so that 12 there is supposed to be like 12 clock. So that's how you can tell where to, uh, how to orient um, your, your, your PCBs. The included hardware, there's uh, 12 of them, I believe. Yeah, 12 screws. Uh, just make sure you tightly fasten them so that uh, they're actually making electrical connections with the pads and those are included. Plug in the battery. Um, once they're bolted shut, you can uh, plug in that battery. Being careful, of course, you don't want to rip it out. And then turning it off, there is no built-in on-off switch. So we can just carefully, gently disconnect the battery. Yeah. And then um, installing it into the, the turtle, you just press fit it into place, uh, fit the lens on top. This is before I actually hot glued it to the shell, so you can do that too, just hot glue it to the shell if you'd like. And then you can fit the, the shell over the display. Make sure you click the left side and the right side together, and um, you still have access to the USB port if you orient it in this way where you can, it's symmetrical really, so it can be oriented in either direction, which is kind of neat. That's really it. Um, one last thing, uh, if you want to beam images uh, to the display, you can use this learned guide here that I have linked. If you don't want to do turtle graphics using the turtle library, you can actually throw some bitmap images there. You can take pictures um, with your, your uh, 
your device, your mobile phone, your Android or your iOS device. And then you can download the Blue Fruit LE Connect app and then uh, beam through Bluetooth images to the TFT Gizmo. This learn guide covers that in thorough detail. And it's really simple. You don't need to install an IDE like Arduino uh, because we have a nice uh, drag and droppable UF2 file, which uh, has all the code and libraries necessary. So you don't have to do anything other than going into the bootloader mode and dragging and dropping said UF2 onto the drive. And then you can start beaming Bluetooth images to your, to your gizmo. This is, this is great if you have like um, maybe like an advent calendar or you want to do like just some family photos and things. Um, this is a great way to quickly get images onto the TFT Gizmo. And shout to JP for putting this learn guide together because it covers it, and like I said, in great detail. Did we do the learn guide for the GIF player yet on this? That's uh, forthcoming, I believe. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, so stay tuned for that yeah, one. Yeah, I think uh, I think Aaron St. Blaine's going to be doing that one because mm. he's got some neat uh, ornament ideas. All right, coming soon. Yeah. GIF playing on the Gizmo. Yeah, yeah, very cool. And since there's some GIF playing, does that also mean Eyeball code? Yeah, coming eyeball soon. Code is, I think he finished it, actually. Yeah, I don't I have it ready. I'm yeah. just trying to tease it. <laughs> right. Yeah, I think so it's up coming there. soon. GIF mm. and eyeball code for the uh, CPB. That's so funny. That's his turtle tail now. A little battery. <laughs> That's so funny. I broke the battery. Didn't I do that like two weeks ago where I yeah. ripped the battery too? Golly, I'm bad at that. Yeah, so what I usually do, as you can yeah, kind of see here, I add an additional piece of the, oh, the tape. The tape. So we have this really awesome, oh my god, I forgot the name of it. Capton the tape? Capton tape. Uh, mm. I add right on top of that to give it a little bit of strain relief. So I think definitely pick up a roll of that. I was going to say, don't we carry that Yes, stuff? we do. What would you search for? Just Capton? Capton. There, there it is. Go. High temperature Capton tape. And it's the perfect size to add to the top of any of the LiPo batteries. Well, it says we ordered it in 2016. It's still it's holding still, up. Yeah. It it's looks great like stuff. a brand new. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely great, like Pedro said, for, for patching and um, mm -hmm. their batteries. I like it a little bit more easier since if it does somehow break or you need to extend the cable, you can peel that tape off and yeah. resolder it. Yeah, peeling well, off that hot glue is a little dangerous. Gonna be, yeah. A little bit messy. All right, well, if you want to pick up said tape, you can use coupon code Turtle Tree. Get 10% off that. Fill up your chef and carrot. Tom Veach was saying that he ordered one of the e-ink displays. So Yay. let's go ahead and use it as a segue into what are we prototyping just to show off how crisp and beautiful this looks. Yeah. Or am I? That one. That looks so nice. Yeah, so, so this is the triple color e-ink. That's correct. I can uh, load the product page for it. I do have it open. What am I looking at? I know, I know, hold on. Pause the playback on all of my displays. That's funny. All right, so, yep, it's a fresh, yeah. brand new product that was added this week. So they have 82 in stock currently. And there it is. Part Blinka. of the Think Ink. I think it's, is Minor it Think products? Ink? I yeah, think it think says ink. that right on the back. Yeah, Think Why ink. is it Think Ink? Oh, it has a little uh, a brain, brain in there. It's smarts. So it remembers. Yeah, it's got some RAM. It also has a built-in audio amplifier, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. there's, there's enough room on the display to do that. And uh, it's, it's very much similar to the Gizmo TFT display, but uh, this time with an e-ink display, which is great because uh, you can still run the image when there's no battery connected to it. So that's awesome. So what we're working on is a, a little 3D printed ornament um, that houses the Circuit Playground and the e-ink gizmo. Gotta hit the focus yeah, on right. this thing. <laughs> too. So, while I focus, it's set on auto, so I'm gonna set it to manual. There you go. Yeah, so you can, uh, we have libraries for Circuit Python. This is running Circuit Python, by the way. And uh, it's using the e-ink libraries and we have some learn guides um, that cover how to get bitmap images on e-ink displays. If it has quite a few different ones, shields, feather wings, and now the e-ink gizmo. And uh, this is so brand new. Uh, we're still, uh, team is still working on a learn guide for uh, the specific examples and just the learn guide, the product specific learn guide for it. Yeah, yeah, you need uh, this guy. Here you go. I'll let you do that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so uh, it's a bit of a two-piece snap fit thing, the ornament. And I have 
um, sort of two compartments. Uh, this, is, <laughs> this is funny because, uh, let me just open it then. So I have these two little, I have these four snap uh, snaps that will kind of click into these openings here. And uh, this is actually running the regular Circuit Playground Express. There's enough memory to just display the bitmap because there's no animation going on here. Um, so that works really well. And uh, this just pops out like that. Interesting luff. Um, yeah, this uh, prints without any support material. And uh, it also has a thread here. So really, ideally, what this was for, um, it was for the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. So that's all the way it clicks in there. So I have this guy. We, we made a little built-in slide switch for the battery so that we can uh, power this on. And this is a Circuit Playground Blue Fruit in there. And what we did is we thought it'd be cool if you could change out the covering. So this has a little thread. It's got a really, really small thread. And then this is just super glued on top of this translucent material to give it that cool effect. And you could put some decals here or maybe even 3D print a litho pane. So you can put images of, of uh, maybe your family or your, your pets or something. But there's the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. Um, I could log into my phone and change some of the, graph, some of the things if I'd like. Let me do that now. Um, the back here is just a little extra piece that I super glued on there. But the slide switch is nice because, um, you know, it has that, uh, it has the, uh, the male and female JST connectors for the battery that are in there. Um, so let's connect to it. And then change using the controller module, go to the control pad, and then I can pick different animations here. That's a cool one. So when you put the cover in, it gives you some better diffusion. And I'll probably make some more different uh, different things. Is it, which one's better? I like the blue one. And if you uh, want to use your Circuit Playground Express, I have a bunch of these like little bits that I printed for different covers. Here's like the snowflake. Here's like a little, I don't know, swirly thing. But yeah, it, it, obviously it's going to fit all the circuit playgrounds. So if you have a classic or an express one, same dealy. And you can have uh, swappable covers. So this will probably be next week's learn guide because uh, we're getting pretty close uh, to, the, to the holidays. And uh, let's go ahead and open this just to see what's in there. <laughs> what is it? Andy Calloway. Now that's a snowflake. <laughs> yeah, this is the, what, the 350 milliamp battery as well. So it's hanging out in there. Um, plenty of room in this little compartment for the slide switch and the excess battery cable. And uh, you have access to the USB port. So you can still program it. And a really nice note, this is new PETG from Prusa Mint. And this stuff is gorgeous. It has a... Uh, this glitter effect to it. Let me see if I can focus the camera. Because this stuff is really nice. Where am I? Uh, wrong camera. It's the C930C. Turn off autofocus. And there we go. So you can see the little bits of glitter there. This stuff is fantastic. Uh, the only thing that I changed in my slicing profile in Cura was the temperature. So I'm printing this at 240 C. This is the red filament here, which is um, PETG. So haven't really played with PETG. I've been sticking to PLA for many, many years. Actually we did a long time a long ago. Long time ago when it didn't work well. Yeah. This stuff is really great. Look at that overhang for that USB port. It's freaking amazing. It was great. So uh, yeah, I'm really liking it. Again, this is from Prusa. Uh, we have a link, Paige, if you want to post that link in the, uh, in the chats. Yes. But I definitely recommend. Uh, also, the Santa hat for the turtle was printed in PETG. Look at that little bits of glitter in there. I just painted this with acrylic paint to give it that white. Um, but yeah, I think we're going to start using PETG more, especially for mechanical stuff that needs the strength. Um, I believe it has a higher temp. It's got to, right? Because you got to print it at 240. I think it'll work some, good for some of the things that we have in our car. Um, we printed like a, a PLA, um, what was it, like a storage thing for, for the Model 3. And things all warped and melted because <laughs> we were I knew it. that would happen. I know you would. Um, I wanted to just see. We wanted to test to see it, how yeah. bad it would be. Would it melt in the car? No, it didn't melt in the car, but 
like to the it's car. Just a form. It's just a form. So we're going to try out the PTG stuff. Um, yeah, look at all these cool. Yeah, the formulas are better now. The printers we're using are better now. That's you right. can actually handle it. Yeah, and the uh, note, uh, Prusa, uh, Prusa filament, Prusa mint just came out with Galaxy Black PETG. So yeah. that's excellent because now I can print a bunch of uh, uh, mechanical parts in this lovely glittery black filament. So sweet. You got some ornaments coming your way. Some 3D printed little bits that you can mm -hmm. swap out and you can take these out. I really like these threads as you've seen. Threads and snap fits. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Um, let's look at your goggles. I don't know what else to do here, but uh, anybody have any questions? Oh yeah, the filaments, please link those. Yep, I did. People are those saying are, that yes, uh, it is terrific. So yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, Donahue. yeah. One last thing too, uh, speaking of filaments, uh, we have this, just a note, this green was printed in what is it, every one PLA. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it's stuff. this called mini rainbow PLA. It's actually really neat. I got lucky here because you can't really get this shade of green anywhere other than a rainbow type filament. You're thinking, what is a rainbow spool? Um, let's take a quick look at, at it. Where's my links here? Here it is, mini rainbow. This stuff's pretty neat. Um, it gives you a good, it's PLA, it's not PETG, but uh, it gradually changes color um, as you print more of it. So it kind of gives you these different colors in one spool, which is pretty neat. Again, I got lucky where it was, it was it's kind of a gradient from yellow to green. So that's how I was able to get this really nice um, color here. And it's kind of silky. I don't know if you can see it, but it, it's got this really nice sheen to it. I've been seeing a lot of the silky type filaments and uh, these guys here. Um, make really good stuff. It's really uh, affordable as well. And uh, the quality of it is just superb. So check it out, Ev Ur one Uri one is the manufacturer. Amazon Choice, there you go. And they have different silk colors. So if you're looking for something that's just really pretty, maybe not so mechanical, check out these line of filaments. It's I really want to nice. try that, out, that purple glitter one. But the rainbow is something to, like, that is pretty, great. Pretty like, cool. Just like, I don't know what color, let me throw a rainbow at it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Works great, right? The dimensional accuracy is really well because I got the, you know, super tight tolerances for the snaps and the magnets. Mm -hmm. So uh, there you go. There's some filament there. We were going to do this at Shop Talk, but eh, we're already here. Yeah, as you're saying, <laughs> oh, why is 3D modeling and printing so much fun? It's amazing. They go hand in hand. It's so fun to learn. Yeah. And uh, uh, Denon is saying that, yeah, you just use P Pet G, the uh, Prusa Pet G to print a shoehorn. For his friend. There you go. That's a good one too. We're gonna play it outside. Know, everybody's been telling us to try PT for, for a while. For years, yeah. That PI, PX. Yeah. It, it just takes a little bit it to does. transition over and to right. get all the things working. Exactly. Especially when you're like right in the middle of production, it's you don't want to try yeah, it. Yeah, I finished. I had to like relevel the bed and try out different settings, but it, it works out. It's definitely worth it mm -hmm. um, in the long run. Okay, those are our. That and is just one of the things that's being prototyped for the winter holiday. Yep. So Phil PT has been obsessed with Watchmen and with yep. Circuit Python. There's yeah, Circuit Python getting yeah. all nice and stable. Uh, lots of speed ups. He was like, hey, it's time to update our goggle code. So he wanted one themed after the what is it, the Night Owl goggles. Yep. That were shown off in a uh, latest season or series of Watchmen right. episode Netflix. Two. Specific episode number two. Yeah, so go ahead and go to the wide and put these guys on. So before we had these really cool goggle builds, we have a learn guide on them, but the way that had to be constructed was using like Arduino and you had to like glue all these components together. Uh, so we came up with a way to just 3D print everything. Nothing is glued in place. Everything just snaps into the existing goggles that are in stock in the store so everything's just press fitted in or we're using the screws to hold everything together and phil b came up with this awesome code so shout you, out to phil b dragon writer yeah. of, of father of neo pixel code <laughs> the yeah, this is whisper. excellent so you can control the speed of which way the little things turn in you can control the little the stylized i guess uh 
form. And how are you controlling up. it? So we added rotary control to it. Yeah, so there's a rotary encoder. It's uh, mounted on the side. Mm -hmm. So you have the option to go up, tune it down, and then a select button. Yeah, so I just also, clicked and held, and now yeah. you have access to changing what color the, uh, the ring is. So you can just cycle through all of the hues for all different colors. And then you also have brightness control. Have it go black, and it goes super bright. And then go back out and jump into different, different modes. Yeah. Like so orientations of like the spots are. How many modes are there? Like three or four? There's a lot of modes, a lot of control. Speed, and then even the direction that these are spinning. That's so cool. Go slow and then go the other way. These are so animation. dope. <laughs> I know, it's so cool. The These coolest really part cool. to think about is you can actually see through them. Okay, because you're the ones you had to glue everything inside of the lenses. Yeah, the eye sockets, yeah. Just a little bit of 3D printing. You can have all the components right on your face. You can mount the rotary to the side and all the batteries and everything fit in there quite lovely. No gluing, all using the existing screws. So if we jump over to the overhead, sure. you can see how this is being held together. There's a little nose bridge that connects both goggles. So we're using Ninja Flex here to just create our own little nose bridge that's connected to this uh, little Ooh, case that it? houses a 400 milliamp hour battery, a trinket M0, the slide switch, as well as the uh, LiPo backpack to add recharging to that. So not, it's the Cheetah variety. So it is, it's like flexible, but not super flexible. Thanks, so it does Cheetah. Provide uh, stability for that. Please say that you can print it with a, a Bowden because everyone asks, was can I print that on, on a Bowden? Bowden uh, printers? The Cheetah is meant for like Bowden mm -hmm. uh, type printer. Not meant for it, but it's definitely, it's you so definitely want to nice. use Cheetah for, uh, for the, the TPU stuff. 95A. Yeah, so. yes, we have these hardness. little nubs on here that are holding the, uh, the two uh, lenses together. So you have adjustable sizes for that if you have a bigger head. And then we have the Ninja Flex lid on here. On the sides here, we have the uh, rotary mount. Looks like this. And this just simply uh, is held together by the lens uh, covering. Cover. Yeah. yeah. So this screws off. Right. It has a built in yeah. thread. And the custom goggles that Adafruit carries has like three layers of, of lens. Mm -hmm. So you have like this, sh this like shading, the shaded lens, a clear glass lens. Just for clarity, Pedro took out the the dark shading one so that you can see through it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. So um, you, we do it all have comes like, like sunglass type ones, so it can be nicely shaded. We also have this cover on here to yeah. provide a, a little bit of covering to the NeoPixel ring, mm -hmm. and that's actually what's holding it in place. So instead of glue, these are being snap fitted in or press fitted in, and then when this uh, gets screwed on, the uh, the pressure is like holding everything yeah. together. So it's holding this guy, it's holding the it. cover. Yeah. This is so, great because like you no could blue. you could print the whole thing out and design the whole thing, um, but imagine printing that you know for hours, right? Yeah, These little bits work. here you can print them there's, um, separately. There's a lot and, of them for hangs and all that that right. would not come out as nice. Right. So. so it's great to kind of add these to to design these add-ons for the, the mm -hmm. existing goggles. They already have a great design and it comes with the, the elastic bands and the clips and all that. Exactly. So uh, yeah, we already stock it too, so you might as well add to it instead of yep. completely so, redesigning it. So just a couple of pieces that uh, enhance the goggle project. Right. And we have a whole build, so you can start building these. And I've been tweeting out the code for this. So you can go to the GitHub yes, and right. grab those and start building your own today yeah that's great all you need is a trinket m0 mm -hmm. the two 16 neopixel rings and a battery what kind of battery you got in there so we have the 400 milliamp hour battery Perfect. inside there yeah and uh, we also have the trinket lipo backpack so you can use the usb port from the trinket m0 to recharge the battery recharge the battery this is great i know these are so awesome <laughs> yeah do you have access to your usb port at all you know what i need to add that in there is it? It's pretty easy. So the lid I mean, on the back here. I mean, you just take it out. And yeah. You can reprogram it that way. You don't need to reprogram it, I think, because this thing's already fully featured yeah. as it is. Yeah, I, I think uh, I'll have it coming out like right here, maybe. Cool. Yeah. Maybe you don't really need it. I think, after, like you were saying, after it's done being programmed, that's pretty much it. Yeah. All of the functionality and the customization comes from just playing with the rotary knob. Oh, right, the USB port awesome. <laughs> um, would, would charge the battery, so yeah. that's that's a little bit of a convenience to be able to do that. Yeah. 
But other than that, that's great. Again, you could pretty you could 3D print your own coverings for it and mm -hmm. just add more stuff to it if you'd like. But I think this is pretty excellent. Yeah. You so create your own nub too, the little rotary. That's what I was one. thinking too, because they have but like it a looks little good, red tip on there, but. Uh, just to make it a little bit more easier, since these do take about six hours to print just because of the, oh, the uh, Ninja Flex. Yeah. Yeah, the TPU takes quite a while. Uh, there are support materials that need to be used because of the roofs, mm. you know, it's just to hide uh, all the components. And uh, I think it's an awesome upgrade yeah. to our goggles. Cool. Well, we're working on that learn guide. And if you want to pick up the That's parts right. now um, that are in stock, definitely use coupon code Turtle Tree. Pick up the rings and. Uh, the Trinket M0. Yep. You can check out the code. Yeah. On GitHub. Yeah, the code will, uh, has a nice thing in the top that tells you where it's wired to and what parts are used. This is super early. Yay. Yay, yay, yay. Okay, one last piece um, as we're doing what are you prototyping? Uh, over here. Yes, so an update to. The, the motorized camera slider. This is a new project that we're collaborating with Liz of Blitz City DIY. She runs a, uh, a YouTube channel. And she's also a guide author of like five plus guides. Um, she's really into cameras and stuff. So I figured, hey, maybe um, we want to collaborate on this project. So it uses uh, the existing hardware um, for the motorized camera slider. Uh, the original design used the a Metro M4 and a Bluetooth, uh, a Bluefruit kind of uh, shield add-on. So you would uh, control the slider through the Bluetooth app. It's uh, not the most intuitive thing as we if we've grown to use it a lot, a lot. Um, we really wanted to get this thing updated with CircuitPython and the Adafruit Feather platform. So really, really great use of the Feather platform. We have three different feathers going on there. We have the motor feather wing, the uh, M4 Express, which is like the brains, and um, what was the other? Oh, the mini TFT display. So now you can display what the, what the thing's doing, how much time is remaining. This is excellent, excellent use of bitmaps. So you can tell just by looking at the display what it's doing. Um, and you can swap out the feather wings easily. Uh, this is really awesome. So huge shout out to Liz Clark um, for collaborating on this project, writing all the code for it. And we have a little, well, that's not the one. This is the video. This is the actual video of, um, of the captured motion time lapse. We used our Blackmagic Pocket 4K cinema camera with a 15 to 35 millimeter lens. Um, and we're shooting in 4K now, so uh, you can get some really nice imagery from it. Really great low light as well. It's just an example of uh, getting a motion time lapse. This is running for like maybe five minutes. So you don't really see much progress of the 3D print happening, but uh, I thought I'd, I'd do a quick five minute um, timeout. So you can use the joystick um, that's built into the Featherwing to choose between different uh, um, modes. So we have a five, a one hour, and something like that, like four, five, 10, 20, one hour. You can completely change it if you want. Uh, that's what's awesome about CircuitPython is you can plug it in and there's your code. You can reprogramming it on any um, text editor, or any computer that has USB support. So that's really, really neat. Um, I'd love to talk more about this for hours, but uh, um, that's, that's supposed to be a sneak peek. And here it is. Also, Liz uh, shared it uh, last, on last week's uh, show and tell, I, I believe. Yeah, it was last week. Yeah, so check it out. And uh, we'll be collaborating on the learn guide. So we'll, we'll probably get this out oh, right before the, the, uh, the new year, I think, right before everybody goes on vacation. So. Excellent timing because I believe that's what we did last year or the year when we released this. We released it like at the end of the year, something like that. So uh, there you go. Very neat. I'm, I'm really surprised I was able to push um, the black magic. Um, well, it's lighter than the DSLR, so that works really well. Sweet. There you go. So if you want to pick up anything in the Adafruit shop to build your own slider, your own turtle, or your own goggles, turtle tree is the coupon code. How's that? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, do we have anything else in the shop talk, or did we cover everything? Let's go ahead and jump into community makes. Um, I got one last one. I just remembered. Because Thingiverse doesn't display any of my images on my turtle. <laughs> I uh, threw it up here on Prusa, 
So uh, Prusa Printers is a great way to share your designs or to find new designs. And they are currently hosting a contest for Christmas or winter designer stuff. So check it out and click on join contest. You can see all the different entries that are in. Oh, look at this Christmas tree. It's called the Nozzle Christmas tree. That's brilliant. Whoa. Yeah, so this is a great place to get inspiration for, for either printing stuff or designing stuff. Um, I think I want to enter because I want to get myself an i3. <laughs> um, we'll see. Uh, they, they did their Halloween one a couple months, or a couple months, like last month. So uh, that was really great. And they also awarded a person um, a free printer, a nice new one. And uh, yeah, check them out. We have a profile, an Adafruit profile. And uh, there's my turtle. Hey, look, the image is actually a display, unlike Thingiverse. How about that? That's really great. So you can download the STLs here or the, um, the step file or the F3D file as well. They're all, has, they're all hosted here as well. You can remix them, post makes, do all the things you know uh, about um, Thingiverse, but actually runs and displays images properly. How amazing is that? Shout out to Prusa. <laughs> that was my little Prusa thing. So check them out. Um, make a profile if you haven't already. There you go. Now we can do community makes. Let me pull up the, uh, while, the while the video plays, I'll pull up the, what, the Thingiverse thing. How funny, huh? All right, so you can talk about it while I get the link. So continuing on, on with the theme of the holiday season, we thought it'd only be appropriate to have some Christmas themed, Halloween themed <laughs> ornaments. This is a Santa skull ornament designed by... Spooner 2011. Yeah, this is an awesome design. It incorporates a skull with a Santa hat. Nice little curve there, flopping over of the hat there creates the hook placement to hang it up on your tree. So I'm using the Glow PLA and the red filament. I just painted on the white there so it's not dual extruded. And uh, I actually did have to chop up the skull and the hat just so I could print those separately. That's and nice. And it makes a nice little ornament there. There it is. And there it is. Nice little detail in the skull. I'm surprised that, it was, that the, um, the CR10 Bring it up Pro up. was able to print all the little tiny go. teeth. That's amazing. Yeah, and this is PLA PHA, which isn't the best at quality. Mm -hmm. And it's a very old um, spool. <laughs> Right. So this does glow in the dark and uh, prints upside down, so you don't need any support material. And it's an awesome little ornament if you're uh, wanting to have that gothy theme on your tree. Yeah, very pretty. Yeah, so this would definitely look really good on a black Christmas tree. Mm, nice right. little uh, UV lighting on there, so you can get a nice uh, glow from the, P the glowing PLA. Making Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and very cool. Bring it up closer because that's where my my focal point is set to. Yeah, check out the little teeth there. It's got some boogers. <laughs> very neat. So oh yeah, so we fell off the bed. What happened there? <laughs> they just didn't. Oh yeah, my Z hop was. Your Z hop was too uh, high. Was not high enough. Oh okay. So we crashed into uh, some of the little dribbles. Mm -hmm. And uh, so definitely check out the design if you want to yeah, gothify your Christmas tree. Yeah, let me go to the the thing of first page. <laughs> Here's the thing of this page. This was actually posted uh, three years ago or something. Um, I guess you want to upload a remix since you chopped it yes, in half. Yes, I'm going to. It would be nice. Yeah. Yeah, because printing this in one go would be a lot of support. Yeah, lot it of would be. It's actually why I did that. I, I'm glad that you went out of the way and like made it so you don't need supports. All you needed to do was just cut that thing in half mm -hmm. and then you have some two flat surfaces. Yeah, so using the Prusament slicer, I uh, okay. just went in there and used the a uh, plain cut tool, uh, lined it up so it was nice and straight, and then just cut away right between where the hat and the uh, skull meets. It's pretty sweet. All right, cool, we'll post that later. Mm -hmm. And it's your standard ornament size of, uh, I forget what it was, 52 millimeters, or something like that. Hmm. Okay. So uh, definitely not too big and not too small. Excellent. Nice way to ring in the holiday. Cool, Come, continuing on with Community Makes. We've got another one here. These are some makes of some projects. This is Ooh. the heat press insert with a spring return. So shout out to uh, 
Gregory CM on Thingiverse for posting his make and his remix. Instead of using the, uh, let me see, this remix replaces the pulley and counterweight system used in the A2 Makers and Adafruit design with a constant force spring providing a simpler solution. Uh, this is uh, similar to, uh, to stuff that is inside a tape measure. That is brilliant. So you can see here the little metal thing here <laughs> will uh, always have the same amount of force to retract it. So that's really nice. So you just pull it down and then when you're done, you just slowly let it go and it will retract itself. Very, very awesome. I believe you also remixed the clamp for the soldering pin for a different soldering iron. Nice. This is the Weller. WES51, and you can find uh, this link in the description of our YouTube video here if you want to try out this uh, build. Very nice build for getting uh, heat set inserts installed into 3D printed parts that need it. Okay, next up we have a prop from Kingdom Hearts. It's the Kingdom Key Blade. And lovely, wouldn't you know it? Thingiverse is hanging. <laughs> There you go. This page uh, isn't working. Oh, I wonder why. Yeah, Imagination to form is saying it should be renamed to Slowoverse. Slowoverse. <laughs> there it goes. Uh, so shout out to uh, Kazi Bowl, who shared their make of the Kingdom Keyblade. This thing's tall. Whoa. This thing's big. It's it's nice. It uses heat set inserts and a couple Super screws. Cool. A lot of snap fit and screw parts. So uh, there you go. If you are a fan of Kingdom Hearts, Maybe we'll have a kiddo that wants a king keyblade. You can print this out. It's uh, modular, so you can make it as tall or as short as you want, which is great. Cool. All right, the last thing is, if I could get the link, is uh, I remember Pokemon uh, Go. This is from Pokemon Go. Uh, we made a battery charger, uh, a potion. I forget what the kind of potion is. But it's a, it's a potion, <laughs> and it houses a USB battery. Uh, this person here, uh, Danton Guy, uh, scaled it up to 250 just for fun <laughs> and printed it in purple. So it's a great little snap fit together. A couple, a, a couple pieces, a couple drops of glue for the, the nozzle or something, I can't remember. Um, but most of it snap fits together. It's a giant potion from Pokemon. A couple of people have made it, actually. Mm -hmm. It's a nice little fun. case for the lipstick uh, battery chargers That's that we have. Nice. Yeah, and you can see their little thing there. You could also, man, we went crazy with this. Remember we like milled the thing? We even had like a <laughs> GPS tracker too that was never released. There was oh a lot gosh, of projects. Right, yeah, because the following day, like they changed the API and it stopped working or something. Anyway, blast from the past. And uh, that's this week's Community Makes. If you guys have any cool projects you'd like to share, you want to get on the blogs, Throw them up there on, um, on on Discord so we can get to it and tag us in it as well. We're always looking for more content for the blog and to share uh, projects in the community. I see here Azure Skies is working on something. Yes, I was just checking it out on the A360 site. It's an awesome railgun. Wow. Check that out. Check it out. Super Last minute one from uh, Azure Skies. It looks doing, so man? cool. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this is loading faster. Look at this. <laughs> Holy moly. What? That's excellent. Pretty this is really sweet. cool. This is a really nice assembly. Check it out. There's your skies on, on Discord. This has some really, really cool uh, lightsaber builds as well. Sweet. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that. We'll uh, throw it up on the blog if you'd like. And that brings us to, I think, the end of the show. What do you think? Yes, Matable is saying that uh, as decimal oct octal equivalent, December 21st is October 31st. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Is that what Phil meant in the, in the <laughs> Slack? That's funny. Okay. All right, well, later tonight we have more show. Tonight we invite you to, if you've got projects to share, definitely come on the Show & Tell live stream. It happens every Wednesday tonight at 7.30 p.m. Uh, we're using StreamYard, really, really nice um, piece of software that, uh, that is nice. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll throw the invite link in the Discord chat room when the time comes so you guys can come in. Last week, we had a bunch of folks that came in, so if you weren't able to come in because it was a full house, uh, please try so uh, today. Maybe we'll be a little bit lighter with the holidays coming up and stuff. 
Um, so there will be there will be free vinyl stickers <laughs> as all uh, attendees get free vinyl stickers for coming on and sharing your projects. It doesn't have to be a project. It could also be just progress. It's very fun. And then after that, at 8 p.m. Eastern Time today, we have Ask an Engineer with Lamar and Phil. Full hour of Lamar and Phil. Um, last week, they had special guests from Microchip, I believe. This week, I don't think they have any guests, but we'll see. So that's tonight at 8 p.m. New hardware, secret unreleased hardware, CircuitPython news, and much, much more. Also, you folks will uh, be awarded something special at the end of the show for calling in and answering three magic questions. So check it out. It's tonight at 8 p.m. On all the social channels, be sure to check in to Discord around that time so we can give you the invite link so you can join in. Where's, that? Where's my Discord picture? There it is. So we're just celebrating, what was it, 15,000 members. Holy moly. Let me scroll through. Thank you, folks, for joining. Is that correct? Is it 15,000? Yeah, I saw a thing yesterday. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. That's going to be it for this episode of 3D Hangouts. Thank you all for joining. Don't forget, tune in. coupon code is Turtle Tree. We'll have another one tonight. Mm -hmm. Expire at 11.59 p.m. tonight. Works on everything except certificates and Ada Box subscriptions, which we have to remind you all the subscriptions are, or the Ada Box, um, what is it? The amount that we're able to ship out is almost all up. So don't forget to sign up for they're all gone. I want to make sure you have that special gift for your loved one ready to go this holiday season. Don't, so don't miss out. A lot of awesome projects are being geared up for this Ada box. Yeah, you said it. All right, it's gonna be it. <laughs> See you guys tonight. I oh, forgot to, don't forget, tomorrow we have more show with yeah. John Park every Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Last week had special guest Scott Shawcroft. Yes, definitely check that out. They yeah, did a really lot fun. of hacking with the Game Boy. A lot of synth stuff, yeah. so definitely check it out. Yeah, very fun. Very funny, too. They're, they're, uh, he's a comedian, man. <laughs> All right, well, that's going to be it. We'll see you later tonight. But until then, don't forget to make a great day. See you tonight, folks. Hey. It's beginning to look like Ada Boxmas Everywhere you go Let your ideas flow For projects you want to show With push buttons and LEDs aglow It's beginning to look like Ada Boxmas Everything is grand But the nicest thing on the shelf Is something you made yourself With your Circuit playground with a speaker for sound is the wish of Barney and Ben. A Raspberry Pi with some LCD eyes is the hope of Janice and Jen. And friends at the hacker space can't wait to 3D print again. It's beginning to look like Ada Boxmas everywhere you go. So grab A for the wing, let the piezo ring, and prototype a board for sensing snow. It's beginning to look like Ada Boxmas. Time for a Silastros. Get your projects all debugged, then cozy up nice and snug with some wool.